Welcome everyone. Today we have the pleasure to have with us uh, Miss Sana Kuka, Miss uh, Konstantina Kare uh, Georgi, and uh, Miss Yasminka Souza, our colleagues from DG Home, to let us know and enlighten us a bit more about the interact specific objective too. In terms of complementarities, in terms of synergies of these interact specific objectives with other instruments and tools put in place. Welcome and thank you very much for accepting our invitation and being with us today. Thank you very much uh, and good afternoon for my part as well. Uh, my name is Sanna Kuka, so I will go through kind of introduction to the three home affairs funds that we have proposed for the next. Uh, multi-annual financial framework. And then my colleagues will join me. Uh, Yasminka will shortly introduce you to the Asylum and Migration Fund. And Konstantina will explain the Credit Border Management Fund. Maybe you can put the next slide which shows in a few pictures what the three funds are about. Integrated Border Management is about controlling the external borders. Internal Security Fund is about the security of the EU and, and Asylum and Migration Fund is about asylum seekers and, and legal and dealing with ir irregular migration. We can move on. Yes, next one please, still. Thank you very much. So I st we started with a few words about what is new with the, the three home funds that we have proposed. Uh, the, in the next slide you will then see that we have a significant increase in the funding levels. We have also proposed an increased flexibility. In the current period, the fund is also managed uh, in two ways, by, by the member states in shared management and then by the commission in direct management. We have currently in the new period proposed something which we call the thematic facility, which covers uh, about 40% of the funding envelope which will be either flexibly implemented throughout the programming period, either in shared management by the member states or by direct management by the, member uh, by the commission. That is an improvement to the current period, which was very strict and we were not really able to react to changing situations on the ground, because as you all know, the field of uh, migration and, uh, and security is not stable and things move quite fast and, and we need to be able to react maybe better to changing circumstances. Uh, another improvement which we consider important is that we have involved the relevant agencies in the home affairs field. We have six important agencies in all three policy areas which will be involved more in the programming of the funds and in the implementation of the funds. We have also improved the joining the, the common provisions regulations family of funds. We have improved the, the strength and the principle of partnership uh, between different stakeholders in the member states for the implementation of the funds. And we've paid even more attention to synergies and complementarities with other EU funds. And I think today's event is a good example of that. If I can have the next slide, please. Here is the table that I mentioned with increased funding levels. And even compared to the Commission original proposal, which came out like all the other MFF proposals in 2018, in May 2020, so in a few, few weeks ago, the Commission even proposed additional funding, especially to the AMF, which is the Asylum and Migration Fund, and to the Border Management and Visa Instrument. Uh, they just uh, uh, one item which reduced which is the, the agencies in the border management area but everything else went up in the new commission proposal we will have to see how the negotiations and the agreement on the mff overall go but this is currently the proposal that we have on the table at the moment uh, next slide please and for for today's event here are what for us which are the important points for synergies and complementarities with other funds. In terms of AMF, we are really looking at long-term integration of, of asylum seekers and migrants. 
And for the border management fund, it's important to, to coordinate actions with the integrated border management fund, which has a, a parallel program, which is by it's a kind of Constantina will explain it in more detail. It's the customs equipment program. And in the area of security, there are several programs because security is a kind of cross-cutting issue which addresses which is addressed in several different programs. And there you can see just a few of them mentioned. And what is important in all three home affairs funds is cooperation in and with third countries, because clearly security is a global issue and cannot be only solved internally. So we also cooperate with the NDG and the IPA program. Uh, I think we can move on to the next slide, please. Uh, then we can turn, I will present shortly the, the internal security fund. Uh, it's the continuation of the internal security fund, the police instrument, which we have already in the current programming period. And it's really to ensure a high level of security in the union, dealing with terrorism, radicalization, organized and serious crime, cybercrime, and then eventually assisting and protecting the victims of crime. It's very much the continuation of the current instrument. If the policy objective looks very, very similar, the funding has gone up by about 30%, I think. Uh, it is divided into three specific objectives. In the first and just the first specific objective, we're trying to increase the exchange of information between different kinds of stakeholders in the member states, between agencies, and also with third countries. The second specific objective is about intensifying cross-border joint operations so that member states are encouraged further to work together because clearly criminality crosses borders and, and it's important for security to be able to work together. And, and the third specific objective is about strengthening, in a sense, national capabilities to combat and prevent crime. And if we move to the next slide, I have a few kind of... Uh, more details on what we would like to do under the different specific objectives. So under the exchange of information, there's uh, some key EU key. so we should ensure that member states implement that. It really relates to the interoperability of different IT systems so that information flows and uh, it's not stopped at national borders and and we want to encourage member states to use more and more these things. So there's all kinds of actions to, to be done in that area. The second is, like I said, this intensifying cross-border joint operations. They be supporting in various forms, uh, joint investigation teams, joint patrols, and then what we call impact actions, which are high priority areas identified together with the Europol, which the member states had committed in the council to address, and we will be able to, all the member states will be able to use the fund to participate in those actions. And it's about, about coordination and cooperation between member states and different agencies and networks. And if you move to the last slide on ISC, no, maybe it's not the last, sorry. A last uh, specific objectives on uh, strengthening capabilities. This is very broad uh, specific objectives. There is various type of activities that are being done there. Here I have just listed the view. It's about training, training law enforcement officers, possibly even training judicial authorities, taking up of new technologies, uh, raising awareness and, and communication activities. And here is a very specific point on the ISF that we want to, to limit the amount that member states spend on, on spending on, on equipment, means the transport uh, or office equipment, and that member states should really focus on, on certain type of actions rather than buying new police cars. This is uh, an important to note that the regulations are still not finalized. They're still in the negotiations between the Council and Parliament, and this is still based on the com original Commission proposal. It's still not sure where we will end. Do I still have one more slide, or was this it? And I can, indeed, I can hand the floor over to, to Yasminka, please. Thank you very much. 
Hi, I'm Yasmin de Souza. Thank you, Sana, for presenting the ISF and the um, parts of the uh, slides that are basically common to all three funds. Uh, I will focus now on the mainly on the scope of the Asylum and Migration Fund. As you can see, uh, the scope of the Asylum and Migration Fund as to the current Asylum and Migration Integration Fund does not change uh, significantly. There are some small adaptations, but overall uh, the intention is to continue supporting the same type of actions that are supported in the current period in the next period as well. The policy objective of the fund uh, is um, to contribute to an efficient management of migration flows in line, of course, with the ACQI and in compliance with the Union's commitments on fundamental rights. And within this policy objective, we have three specific objectives, as you can see. Uh, the first one is to strengthen and develop all aspects of the common European asylum system, including its external dimension. Now, common European asylum system is basically um, a set of rules that uh, govern um, the reception and processing of asylum, uh, of asylum applicants and uh, uh, are trying to standardize these rules in all member states. So in this context, uh, one of the elements uh, that contributes to the strengthening and developing uh, of this common European asylum system is, for instance, ensuring this uniform application of the EU acquis. For instance, um, um, asylum reception uh, um, the, uh, regulation, then uh, uh, reception conditions regulation, um, revised qualification direction, a directive that clarifies basically the grounds of granting international protection. The first two aim at uh, ensuring fairer, quicker and better quality asylum decisions. And of course, adequate reception of the, of the asylum seekers. And then uh, there are also the other uh, one, uh, two more, which is the Dublin regulation, which ensures the, uh, the protection of asylum seek, uh, seekers during the process of establishing the state that is responsible for examining the application. And then Eurodac regulation that allows law inform enforcement access to the EU database of the fingerprints of asylum seekers. So apart from this application of the EU acquis, under this objective, what we aim to support is also uh, the development of capacity of the member states with regards to the appropriate infrastructure to, uh, for instance, reception centers for asylum seekers or services that are provided to these asylum seekers, such as um, translation, interpretation, legal aid, etc. And of course, administrative capacity, which is the training of the staff uh, that deals with these um, uh, with this uh, uh, processing of these uh, asylum seekers. And then uh, within this uh, common European asylum system, we have two more elements that we pay attention to or would like to continue supporting, which is the solidarity between member states, uh, meaning that when one, one member state is under um, uh, migration pressure and their asylum system cannot uh, necessarily cope with the number of applications that other member states can uh, <clears throat> in solidarity, take on some of the asylum applicants and process them in their own countries. This is what we refer to as transfers of international protection and beneficiaries of international protection. And then the last element of this objective is what we call as resettlement, which is um, Again, assisting uh, people in need of protection, but uh, in, in um, cooperation with the UNHCR. So meaning that um, uh, persons who are in need of this protection are taken from third countries and their application is assessed uh, and vulnerability uh, with the UNHCR and then member states uh, pledge uh, to take on a number of people uh, 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 from, for instance, Syria directly into the EU. <clears throat> And then the second uh, objectives, uh, specific objective of this fund is to support legal migration to the member states and short-term integration. And within the legal migration, we also have some key that uh, uh, would, we would like member states to uh, continue supporting the implementation of this key. It is also important to raise awareness on legal migration channels to the EU, but also to cooperate with third countries, for instance, um, with the recruitment agencies or assessment of skills and qualifications, etc. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> but and with, when it comes to uh, the short, what we call short-term integration, this refers 
um, as, as you can imagine, of course, integration is a long-term process. So what we here uh, refer to is um, the type of actions that are provided upon arrival of a, of a person into the EU. So for instance, language acquisition or um, uh, um, um, assistance, um, uh, a civic orientation to understand the rules uh, of, the, of the country they are in, to understand their also rights and obligations, um, <clears throat> and, uh, and also to um, uh, create some awareness of the local population of the need to, for, to integrate uh, uh, persons that uh, are third countries. And then the third specific objective is the uh, countering of irregular migration through, for example, uh, as we say here, returns and increased cooperation with third countries. Here, under this objective also, uh, uh, we aim to support uh, the implementation of the EU acquis when it comes to returns. Uh, for instance, developments of infrastructure for reception or detention, um, uh, developing effective alternative measures to detention, which means um, staying in the community or different ways that uh, persons can can uh, can be accommodated, and then of course also uh, countering incentives for irregular migration, and finally preparation of return for persons who do not fulfill the right to stay. <clears throat> in the EU. Uh, this uh, objective also has what we call an external dimension, which means that for its achievement, it's also important to cooperate with third countries in the areas of uh, readmission. So there is a, 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 co a cooperation with consular authorities and immigration services can also be supported. And as well, um, <clears throat> measures to support the returnees durable return and reintegration in the country of origin um, <clears throat> so uh, next slide please so here you can see um, exact uh, types of projects or actions that can be su supported and are uh, already currently supported under this fund so improving for instance processing of asylum apl applications and here we aim of course to improve the quality and the time that takes to, uh, to uh, approve a, an application. Then, of course, improving reception of asylum conditions, which means the infrastructure, the services that they have access to, the information on the services they have access to, etc. I have already mentioned the resettlement and transfers of applicants for protection. And uh, within the area of uh, irregular migration, we have something that's called voluntary enforced returns. But that includes training and return monitoring. By, by voluntary returns, of course, this is a, a preferred uh, preferred um, way of uh, returning people to their uh, country of origin, uh, providing, of course, they don't have the right to stay in the EU. And this is also incentivized uh, in the AMF <clears throat> by a higher co-financing uh, rate. And uh, forced returns are returns that happen uh, when the um, third country nationals that do not have the right to stay also uh, do not want to leave uh, on their own accord. For the, uh, for the both returns, some training and, um, and uh, reintegration measures can be provided. Uh, and reintegration measures are usually, for instance, either some kind of a, a lump sum um, for the person uh, to help them set out, uh, let's say, uh, a new business in the in the country of origin, or uh, some training or education, uh, um, uh, for instance, on on how to start a small business, to help them start uh, their life uh, in their in their own country, and uh, the final one is uh, what we say, what I call the early integration measures where we uh, in the AMF also aim to incentivize these measures at local and regional level uh, with a higher co-financing rate of 90 percent. So this is, uh, for instance, this higher co-financing rate is an uh, innovation uh, compared to the current period where we have um, noticed that um, some elements, uh, some areas um, and would, uh, member states would need to be incentivized a bit more uh, to, to, pro to implement some actions there. I now give my, uh, the floor to my colleague uh, Constantina who will uh, uh, present the uh, uh, border management and visa instrument. Thank you very much, Yasminka. Um, 
in my turn, I will uh, present to you the board management and visa instrument, which is part of the integrated border management fund, which uh, consists of uh, two instruments, the border management and visa instrument, which is um, um, dealt by uh, DG Home and the Customs Control Equipment Instrument, which is a fund uh, by DG uh, Taksud. Um, the Integrated Border Management Fund uh, was uh, created to facilitate and ensure uniformity between border management and customs control, so as to make the external borders stronger. Uh, it consists of uh, these two funds, the Border Management and Visa Instrument and the Customs Control Equipment Instrument. Uh, the main difference among the two instruments is that uh, the Border Management and Visa Instrument uh, focuses on the control of persons, whereas the Customs Control Equipment Instrument, its main purpose is uh, Customs Authorities Equipment for the control of goods at external borders. Um, the policy objective of the border management and visa instrument is to ensure strong and effective uh, European integrated border management and external borders while safeguarding the free movement of persons within, um, within it and contributing to guaranteeing a high level of security in the Union. Within this policy objective, the, the fund will support uh, two specific objectives. The first one will be the effective European integrated border management at the external borders implemented by the European Border and Coast Guard as shared responsibility of the European Border and Coast Guard Agency and of the national authorities responsible for border management so as to facilitate legitimate border crossings to prevent and to de detect illegal immigration and cross-border crime and to effectively manage my migratory flow. At the same time, uh, the second specific objective will be supporting the common visa policy to facilitate legitimate travel and prevent migratory and security risks. Within uh, uh, those uh, specific objectives, the fund will finance actions such as equipment uh, like the purchase of boats and helicopters and trainings to support member states and uh, coast guards, supporting uh, through such uh, equipment also the development of the European Border and Coast Guard Agency as well as supporting interagency cooperation on maritime surveillance and costumes. Uh, it will also finance the IT systems and their interoperability, and it will contribute to modernizing um, the common visa policy. I'm referring now to the next uh, slide. If the colleague, yes, thank you very much. Um, it will also contribute to modernizing the common visa policy through actions uh, supporting visa application and processing uniform application of the Union ID consular corporations as well as action supporting the activities of the network of the immigration liaison officers. And uh, with this I conclude my presentation. Thank you very much for your attention.